this is Miss Clemmy, and welcome to the podcast on bone formation. Now what you're looking at here are the different bones in the cranium, and as you get familiar with them, um, it should, the, the identification should be a lot easier for you. And so you should be practicing as much as you can. Up here we have a frontal bone. This is parietal, occipital, um, temporal. Here we have the mastoid process. Uh, and here is the external auditory meatus and the zygomatic arch. I love that one. The mandible, the maxilla, the nasal bone. Inside there, the, the conchi and the vomer bone. Uh, here's the lacrimal bone. Okay, and the ethmoid bone, you can't quite see that. It's buried right under there. So these terms should get more and more um, familiar to you as you study them, but you have to put in the time. Now anyways, let me um, quick erase these here. And what I want to show you next is what our skulls looked like before they looked like this. What did they look like when we were newborns? Let me get that one there. All right, we're back. All right, so this is what it looked like. Sure, I kind of flipped it around. It's backwards here. But the bones are there. However, you can see there's some spots where the bones have infused, those soft spots. And the largest soft spot is up here. The spot, soft spots are called fontanelles. It's an E. Sorry about that. Uh, and so our bone had to have formed from the time we're new, newborn to now. And what's what the process we're going to look at today in this video. So that process is called ossification. How do we go from cartilage to bone? And so to do that, I want to introduce a few players. The first player is an osteoblast, which is a bone-forming cell, and an osteoclast, which is a bone-destroying cell. And these two work in tandem to slowly convert cartilage over to bone. So your cells that originally looked like this, where the blue is the cartilage on the ends here, eventually turns all to bone. And so what these osteoclasts do is that they help to first destroy the cartilage. So they'll kind of work in the lead. They'll work out, outwards on both um, epiphyses to get rid of that cartilage and then the osteoblasts will just follow right behind them and lay down a fresh set of bone. So that's essentially what happens. Now when you're done growing and everything has become ossified those two cells they don't stop working. They're always in tandem because even though you're done growing your bones are constantly replacing themselves. And so osteoblasts and osteoclasts, they're always working in tandem to keep your bone replenished and keep it new. Because everything over the course of several years does replace itself in your skeleton. Uh, and the last player I didn't really mention before is the biggest difference between bone and cartilage. It's something called the matrix, the in-between stuff. And the biggest difference is that the matrix in pre-ossified bone, if you will, um, hasn't solidified yet. The matrix is like a gel. Whereas when we get to the growing bone and it's completely ossified, that means the matrix has been calcified, been filled with lots of calcium to make it more um, tough and harder. Okay, So that's the process of ossica ossification. It's pretty simple and if you remember those two types of cells, you'll be in good shape. So let's look a little bit more detail. What does this look like when bones are actually done growing? Well, it looks like this picture over here. And so what we have here is the epiphyseal line. That's what it's all that remains of, on your bones. They can see where that growth line was. So when you are a kid and you are growing and you're trying to ossify that bone, or ossify the cartilage into bone, that isn't called an epiphyseal line. It's called an epiphyseal plate. So essentially that plate pushes its way outward um, as you're growing. So if you ever hear of a child breaking a bone near the growth plate, 
they're talking about the epiphyseal plate, that boundary between bone and cartilage. So what types of bone are formed from this ossification process? Well, the first one is spongy bone, and it, it, it is just that. It's not spongy per se, but it's really porous, like a sponge. And that porous network has a special name. It's called trabeculae. And so you can see it in here. It's all the porous structures. Now the one that we're going to spend more time on is compact bone. And compact bone is laid down and organized in a little bit different fashion. It's organized similar to a tree if you cut it down in those concentric rings. So we have middle and it gets larger and larger and larger. But in a tree it's just that. However, in compact bone, when it gets that, that gets too large, there's another one that forms over here. And there's just tons and tons of tons of these concentric rings. They're called osseons. We're going to look at one in more detail in just a bit. And there is still some cartilage in bone, no matter, no matter what you do, either on the ends as like an articular cartilage. And they're made of chondrocytes. The matrix has not calcified. But let's go back to compact bone. Here's what I was talking about. So you can see these concentric circles. Now, let's see. Here is an osteon. Um, we can circle a bunch of them in here if we wanted to. So they do look like trees if you chopped them in half. And the important part is right in the middle of the osteon. That's called the Haversian Canal, and that's where blood vessels can run through. So I tend to think of an osteon as like an enclosed neighborhood with the main area being that blood vessel, and that blood vessel can only reach its nutrients and oxygen so far to all the houses. You know, we can say, here's a little house, here's a house, here's a house. Well, those are all the bone cells, and they need to get nutrients and get rid of waste. And so all the, the Haversian Canal here houses the blood vessel to do that. And if there was just one Haversian Canal to get maybe a blood cell or a bone cell way out here, it couldn't reach. So that's why you have the repeating units of osteons. Let's zoom in on one even closer. So this is a probably about a fourth of the osteon pizza pie, if you want to look at it like that. To orient yourself, here's the Haversian Canal, so that's the middle where the blood vessels run. And here, the little black blobs, those are the osteocytes, and they're housed in these little nooks called lacunae. So they, they're safe and, and they can still be reached by the blood vessels traveling in the Haversian Canal. And they can, they can still be reached because there's little tiny branches branch off and can reach them. And those are called canaliculi. So they help deliver nutrients and get rid of waste for those osteocytes. And the last thing, is, which is most like a tree ring, are lamellae. Those are the, the gaps between the, the osteocytes here, the layers of the osteon, if you will. And so that's how compact bone is organized and formed through the process of ossification. Now we're going to switch gears just a bit and talk about some unique features of bone and how it's formed. The first category of features are low-lying features called depressions. We have a fossa is a general term for a pit or hollow area, for example, on your mandible. A groove. Um, is like a, a low-lying little furrow. We have a groove on our humerus called the bicipital groove. A sinus, like the sinuses in your nose, is actually like a little cave within a bone. So it's a hollowed out little area. Foramen is one of my favorite depressions. You can see in the picture that just showed up, the foramen magnum is a hole that your spinal cord runs through. You also have the obturator foramen, which is the holes in the, the two ilium, the hip bones. And the last depression uh, is a meatus, and this is a little tube-like bone that provides a passageway. The only meatus that you need to know 
is the external auditory meatus in your ear. Now the opposite of depressions are projectiles. These are some outward growths of bone. The first one is a process. Um, you have a lot of these. You have your elbow, the bone that makes the main elbow bone, the olecranon process sticks out. A spine is a sharp projection. You have a spine uh, by definition on your shoulder blade and your scapula. There are tubercles, which are small round bumps. There are tuberosities, which are large round bumps. And then the largest of them are trochanters. So you have a, two trochanters on your femur, the greater and the lesser trochanter. And then in between those two trochanters is a ridge called the intertrochanteric crest. There's also a crest on the top of your ilium called the iliac crest. And the last one is a condyle. Uh, for example, if you take your femur and as it goes down to help form your knee, like here would be the patella. Um, you can have these rounded bumps in pairs, uh, or your tibia has them as well. So there's like a medial and a lateral condyle. And so that's pretty much the process of bone formation of ossification and a specific close-up look at compact bone and how that's organized. And then we finally wrap things up by taking a look at the different types of uh, formations that can form on, on bones to give them their unique shape. And I hope that was helpful.